Okay, all right, everyone, hold on. Okay, I'm going to take you for a walk. And uh, again, I am not going to explain myself. You're going to use your discernment. You're going to decide for yourself, okay? I am only putting out here what I have received and how I've received it and how I understand it. Now, again, I'm going to um, show a few clips. I'm going to show some pictures. Again, this is not any kind of nar narrative on my part other than to give you the testimony of Jesus. So this is for your discernment. Okay? All I'm doing is I'm bringing it forward, sharing with you what I have received. And it's up to you to discern what is supernatural, what is holy, what is godly, what is perverse. Okay? Now, three months ago, I uploaded, I uploaded the video where I, I was finding out and getting the revelations of these pictures that I, that I took. And one picture came from an outsider only a year or two ago that matched up with something that I had received in 2015. And that was the Labrador, the white dog. I was looking into the dark, trying to understand what it was that I was looking at or just finding it and looking at it, doesn't matter. Yes, it was dark. Yes, we are in the last days. Yes, this is not about peace that you create yourself or all those things that are around you. That is not from Jesus. What's from Jesus is what is from within you. The peace within you. When he says, hold on to your peace, what does that mean to you? That is not what is created around you or something that was, somebody can offer you. The world cannot give you the peace that Jesus gives you. You yourself cannot create it. I am standing here in a vision that was given to me at the age of 12. That's it. They were pictures. I had no understanding of these pictures. I have never recognized these pictures that were flashing before me until I moved here and I stood and I looked over the waters and I saw the city and I saw the tunnel and I saw the bridge. And it was a dream in 2016. I received a dream. Mountains on fire. Many of them, not just one. And as we are descending down the mountain, I see the valley of lawlessness, which is now what we are looking at here in Canada and abroad. The lawlessness of all ages are being affected. And this is what was shown to me in the dream. Oh, and there was a third part, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to get there. Anyway. So here, I want to walk you through this, okay? This was, again, 
In 2015, a lot happened. The year before my dream. Okay, so here I want you to see that this is the dog of, in the clouds. The first one I see is in 2015. And to me, it looks like a lab. So all these years, I've called it the white lab. Okay, that's why it's called the white lab. And the invisible waters is what makes up the cloud. Silly, huh? Okay, so three months ago, oh, it was before that, it was about a good six months now that I was uh, led to go back to 1010, and that was Genesis 1010. It was screaming at me to go back to 1010. And I did. Three months ago, I had the revelation. I knew what I was looking at. But what I didn't know, that these things were happening until now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just show you what was shown to me and how I understand and receive what was shown to me. And then you're going to decide. But you're going to have to hear this from the beginning to the end. And the, if there's any questions, then I would go back about three or four months ago because you see... I went back in my videos just to take a peek and it was four months ago I was talking, I was in Genesis 10.10 10, and I was talking about the sphere and making the connections with the sphere and what it was representing and what it was meaning and how far back that sphere went and about the six-stepped period, pyramid, which led me here to Labrador Sea. And again, the people go back to 800 BCE. Did not know that. This is what sealed it for me, that I was standing right where I was supposed to be. And to keep moving, because there now there's another dog I've got to look at. So here, let me just... Uh, read this out to you for your understanding because as I go forward, like I said, you're going to probably have to go back and forth with this video. You're going to have to check out the, the prior videos that I have done that I've been putting things together. Again, um, this to me is prophecy. And the reason why I believe this is prophecy is because what happened to Greece. And then I want you to go back and I want you to look at that picture and take another good look at that picture of Jesus on the roof and tell me that you don't see a boot. A boot which is in the shape of Italy. Is it not? So let's just talk about the waters for now. Okay, just the waters. Labrador Sea behaves like the ocean's lungs. As the oceans cool, oxygen reach surface water sink to its depths. Those deep currents that flow thousands of feet below the surface of the Labrador Sea carry that oxy oxygen throughout the Atlantic Ocean into the Arctic waters and eventually into the Pacific and Indian Oceans. I'm just going to read this one part of it. It says, by 800 BCE, a new group called the, the Grosswater Plat uh, Paleo Eskimos was living in the various sites throughout our province. They resided here until about 100 BCE in Labrador and 100 CE in Newfoundland. About 500 BCE, a new culture, the Dorset, name of a hurricane maybe, Palo... Uh, Paleo Eskimos arrived in Labrador from the north, from the north. 
So we have dorset. Got to remember that, right? Okay, so we are at the lungs. So I'm finding out the importance of Labrador Sea because of this dog, this picture that I received in 2015 now started to come together for me because of the name itself, Labrador Sea. Okay, Labrador. And then the importance of Labrador and the people, well, that, like I said, was just that sealed it for me here. Okay. All right. So I didn't know this until just recently, um, what was happening around us, because again, I just, I didn't know. I'm just finding all of this out. Okay. So this is three months ago, three, four months ago. I'm learning all of this, right? Okay. So here I find it's one of only a handful of places on the planet where the atmosphere connects with the deep ocean and sends life-sustaining oxygen to the depths, supporting fish in far-flung seas. Tens of thousands of dead fish washed up on the beaches of Texas Gulf Coast over the weekend, and wildfire officials say low levels of oxygen in the water are likely to blame. This was June 14th, 2023. The te this here was six miles long of dead fish. Six miles long. In addition, the North Shore waters of Gulf of Mexico in Brazil, Zira, Zira, County had been calm for the last three weeks with limited wave action. This means very little oxygen has been entering the water by mixing in at the surface. I just showed a few pictures here of these deep sea creatures that have now surfaced and are now on the shores. And here's one in Texas. Here's one in Africa. Here's one in Mexico. Okay, so the Statue of Liberty, these spikes, what do they mean? Seven seas, seven continents, right? Okay, so let me go on and read this. And to the kings that were on the north of the mountains and of the plains south of Chiroth and in the valley and in the borders of Dor on the west and in and to the Canaanite here. You're going to have patience with me on this one and to the Canaanite on the east and on the west and to the Amorite and to the Haiti and to the Prezite and to the Jebusite in the mountains and to the Hevite upon Hermon in the land of, I can't do it, and they, and they went out, they and all their host with them, much people, even in the as the sand that is upon the sea shore in multitude, with horses and chariots, very many, and while all these kings were met together, they came and pitched together at the waters of Meron to fight against Israel. So I also found this. Now we realize that the hurricane is on the south side of the island, 700 miles away. When it's near island, it only pumps out about a gust of wind at 60, no more than 60. So here it says, and to the king that were on the north of the mountains and of the plains south of the uh, turn and in the valley and in the borders of Dor on the west. When broken down, the the, the literal translation of the phrase uh, of the phrase translates to alo means presence and ha meaning breath. Together, the word aloha transfers to the presence of breath or breath of life. So this here is what connected me to the lungs. Labrador Sea. 
which now I'm looking at the star here, the dog, the star. Okay, so I'm going to bring you here before I go any further concerning Maui being the breath of life and Labrador Sea being the lung, okay? I want to bring you here just for a second. So I'm just going to read this all out to you. Scholars have long recognized that Amos utilized an ancient hymn within the prophecy, verses of which are found in 413, 589, 88, 956. The, this hymn is best understood as praising for his judgment, his, ju his judgment demonstrated in the destruction in power, rather than praise of creation. Which removeth the mountains and thy new they know not, which overturneth them in his anger, which shaketh the earth out of her place, and the pillars thereof tremble which commandeth the sun, and it is it riseth not, and sealeth up the stars, which alone spreadeth out the heavens, and treadeth upon the waves of the sea. See, Amos came to me through Karen's word that she had received, and that was malleable. Now, Jonathan wants to take it a different way and go in a different direction with it. That's fine. With I really don't care. Um... But with me, I received a moss and the vision, the visions of a moss and the symbologies through a moss. Okay, again, just do a little bit of scratching of the surface and you'll understand what I'm talking about. A moss, what really got me also was when Karen said that she had to break the line, the, the Bluetooth. I think it's called the Bluetooth. I, I couldn't, I don't know. And she had to cut it or they had to cut it. And I'm thinking, I, I, I bet you that this is what, what Jonathan is talking about, about cutting the line, about cutting the plumb line, you know, and it really bothered me when I, when I heard that. But then again, I, what are you going to do? So I just, you know, kept moving on. But deep down, this was the plumb line. I really believed this. So then after a while, Karen opened up to me over at Jeans, and I'm, I'm going to point this out at Jeans, and I'm going to explain that a little later. But she opened up to me uh, about what she had done with the plumb line, the judgment. I, I couldn't believe it. And I'm thinking, okay, and it was one of those moments where you know, it's okay, let's keep going with this, you know. So I asked my questions about when she did it, what happened, and she explained, you know, that Jonathan was a little disturbed by it. He didn't like the idea, and she had dropped the plumb line right between the two trailers. So a moss has a lot. I've been walking with a moss since then, you know, with the visions and it's side by side here. Okay. So I just want to say this now I'm going to read here again, Karen, I want to say Karen Sullivan brought me to Leviathan and the understanding of the meaning of Leviathan and what this was all about in this. Okay. So I'm just going to read this out. In Isaiah, Leviathan is the serpent and a symbol of Israel's enemies who will be slain by God. In that day, the Lord, and this is important because it's in threes, okay? In threes. In that day, the Lord, with his sore and great and strong sword, shall punish Leviathan, the piercing serpent, even Leviathan, that crooked serpent, and he shall slay the dragon that is in the sea. There's three. Son of man, take up in lamination for Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and say unto him, Thou art like a lion, a young lion of the nations, and thou art, art as a whale in the seas. And thou comest forth with thy rivers, and troublest the waters with thy feet, 
and foulest their rivers of many people. No, rivers. Thus saith the Lord God. I will therefore spread out my net over thee with a company of many people, and they shall bring thee up, up in my net. Then will I have thee upon the land. I will cast thee forth upon the open field and will cause all the fowls of the heaven to remain upon thee. And I will fill the beasts of the whole earth with thee. And I will lay the flesh upon the mountains and fill the valleys with thy height. Now, the fire seems to have happened right afterwards in Canada here. And in this satellite, they were saying that these fires here in this area all started up at the same time, 100 miles away from each other. Okay. So here... Um, I have written to him the great things of my law, but they were counted as a strange thing. And again, this is, I, I would refer that to, you know, what I'm doing here with the dog, you know, um, Leviathan here. Now here's Trudeau. Here we have the birds again. I, anyway, this... I'm going to keep going here, all right? I'm going to go back to, to Maui. Oops. Oh, this is, again, just the, again, the, the seven continents, and this is what's going on with China, in and around China. And in those times there shall be many stand against the king of the south. Also the robbers of thy people shall exalt themselves to, ex to establish the vision, but they shall fail running out of time, right? But yeah, establish the vision, but they shall fail. Oh yeah, this was when I was talking about the palisade. Yeah, when they, when they say the palisade, uh, to include the features that recognize an electronic geofence encircling China to protect it from their enemies. So again, palisade. Again, we have China having, you know, their disputes and their fights and everything else. This is what's going on within the seas. And both these kings' hearts shall be to be mischief, and they shall speak lies at one table, but it shall not prosper. For yet the end shall be at the time appointed. Then shall he return into the land which great riches, and his heart shall be against the holy covenant, and he shall do exploits and return to his own land. At the time appointed, he shall return and come toward the south. But it shall not be as the former or as the latter. For the ships of Shadam shall come against him. Therefore he shall be grieved and return and have indignation against the holy covenant. So shall he do. He shall even return and have intelligence with them that forsake the holy covenant. Okay, so I'm really not sure where I left off. I had to walk away. Uh, we have our Thanksgiving here. So again, I just, uh, I'm not sure where I left off. But really what I'm trying to say here is, you know, the, the worshipping of stars and what, what these dogs mean to me. Now, the lab was the, the cloud 2015. This here, the second lab, was shown to me by a man, a friend of ours, uh, Christopher Trailer, who uh, pulled this dog out with his gift of playing around with the light, and he just pulled it out, and there it was. And I knew immediately to put this on the shelf that it meant something to me, and I just didn't know what at the time. So I'm just I'm not going to go into it any more than that, other than to say that I've done this already. There, You can look into this. All right, so this was a, a star, and I looked into the star, and it was called the... Ch uh, Chandra's car and it means crown or crest and the name Chandra star comes from the name of a incarnation of a Hindu god Shiva and the form he in in this form he married the goddess Parvidya Parvidi 
The name comes from the Sarskit word Candrus. Again, this is so important because it, it means moon, meaning crest or crown, which is the, um, the epithet of Shiva, which means the characteristic or the thing of Shiva. Okay? Now, this really hit home because it reminds me of the night under the stars and how Jonathan Clegg kept saying, you know, the night under the stars, it was all about the worshiping of the star and the moon. And I'm going to bring this to you here. I'm going to show you something. In this one here, I don't know why it's not turning. Okay, so at least thou lift up thy eyes unto the heaven, and when thou seest the sun, the moon, and the stars, even all the host of heaven should shouldest be driven to worship them and serve them, which the Lord thy God hath divided unto all nations under the whole heaven. But the Lord hath taken you and brought you forth out of the iron furnace, even out of Egypt, to be unto him a people of inheritance as you are today. This is Deuter Deuteronomy 4.19. And they did that back in the day, in the ancient times. They really did. I mean, they they call it astrology today. Okay? So here Jonathan is talking about this, and you got it right here, up here. There's pictures of it. He's got videos of it. Okay? So he, he's worshiping here this moon, and he calls it the eye. He's being talked to. He's being told to go there. He's been told to, you know, uh, Karen has to be there. This sort of thing was going on. All right? And what this is, is a moon, um, a moon dog, okay? It's a deity. Like I say, back in Egypt in the day, um, they would worship these stars as, as deities. They would put the name of a deity to that star, as you just saw with Shiva, okay? So here, Jonathan's doing it with the moon dog. The well-known binary star Cyrus, seen here in the Hubble photograph from 2005, was... Cyrus A in the center and white and a white dwarf Cyrus B here to the left bottom and I I had a, a picture and I couldn't understand but it was put on the shelf and it was a, a patch and it had B positive and I was wondering why Jonathan Clegg was wearing this patch of a blood type a B positive and then that's when I found out that this was Cyrus B so it was for a deeper understanding for those that you know, uh, that were close to him to understand what this represented. Okay. So again, this B plus any other reason other than being Cyrus B. A red giant is a luminous giant star of low intermediate mass in the late phase of stellar evolution. Evolution. The outer atmosphere is inflated and Tenuous, making the radius large and the surface temperature around 5,000 K or lower. The appearance of the red giant is from yellow white to reddish orange, including the spectral types of K, M, and sometimes G, but also class S star and, must, and most carbon stars. So you remember when he kept saying, look for G, look for G, right? Here he says, just randomly he just says yo dog yo so this was you know spirit so okay now this i needed to bring this up before i go any further here um and again it was about the the moon now i'm just going to read this out remember the former things of old for i am god and there is none else i am god and there is none like me declare the end from the beginning and from ancient time the things that are not yet done saying my, my counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. Calling Arabius, Arabus bird from the east, the man that executeth my counsel from a far country. Yea, I have spoken it, I will also bring it to pass. I have per, uh, proposed it, I will also do it. Hearken unto me, you sto, sto, stoweth hearted that are far from righteousness. I bring near my righteousness, it shall not be far off and my salvation shall not tarry, and I will place salvation in Zion for Israel, my glory. This here, uh, taken in 2015, I did not realize and just, just now 
that it was the 10th month on the 10th day. So I had 10, 10, I, I just filmed this out. And this was Genesis 10, 10 to me. And this is where it all started with me figuring out what was happening as I'm, you know, explaining the, 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 the Labrador Sea and what is going on with Maui, which I'll be going into. Okay, again, it's all about the stars, the worshiping of the star, the moon, all of this is hand in hand. Taken in 2015, a lot of my pictures are all focusing in on what is going on here today. Okay, so here, uh, again, the 1010, I said this about Travis Scott, the album that he has, 1010. And when you go to the certain song and you stop at 1010, you hear Germany. Again, first thing I think of is Jonathan Kleck is from Frankfurt. So we have a, a moon. This was, to me, I remember taking this first thing in the morning, but when I went back and I checked, it was like 7, 12 in the evening and it was PM and I, I looked at it, it was like really dark. But anyway, um, it's got the, it's got glasses. There's something in the middle of the forehead here. There's a mole and on the cheek. And then there's like a, a white mask being worn here with the big ears almost like I say, looking like a dog, but it reminded me of Kleck with the glasses, the mole on his cheek that goes missing every once in a while. And then you have the mask, which is again, um, my dream. Okay. Now I was really surprised that Jonathan Kleck has not really reached out or anything. has said anything to me about this picture, but here's the picture of him with, I call it the man with the two faces. And right in, in here, it's there's a demon and then there's the, the upside down frog. Um, again, people will say, well, this is a double exposure, but that does not exclude the, the upside down frog, nor does it exclude the demon here that is walking beside him, whispering in his ear. Okay, because all along he's telling you at, that this night under the stars, he's been talking to God and God's been talking to him and, you know, all of this. So who is he really talking to when it, concerning all of this, really? Okay, here we have um, where he says, we are the stars of the sky. That's who we are. That's the blue deep line that goes up to, okay, again. Now, the Egyptians and the Babylonians ass uh, assign stars to their myriad of, uh, myriad of deities. The practice of star worship also thrived in um, Israel, in Jerusalem. This is the beast here that was looking back at me. It was right here. The beast. And because of these these little dolls, I was brought back to Nimrod. I was back, I went right back to Genesis 10 10. Okay, I forgot to put this out here. Now the Leviathan was uh, was a seven-headed serpent that fought against the gods and the forces of good. Therefore, this creature was considered the personification of evil. The Levi uh, Leviathan is similar to the sea beast, Revelations 13, and the dragon, Revelations 12, both with seven heads. The term dragon in the New Testament appears on the Re in Revelation and is related to Satan in Revelations 12. And in, uh, in Isaiah, the sword, okay, the um, Isaiah 27, identifying the instrument using by God is to, by God to kill the Leviathan. John also uses to describe that the sea beast was wounded by the sword, Revelations 13, 14. And he said, Hear now my words, if there be a prophet among you, I, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision and will speak unto him in a dream. I had a dream in 2016. I saw fire on the tips of the mountains and a valley below. These are the valleys in Greece in 2023. These are the valleys that are on fire. Praise ye him, all ye his angels. Praise ye him, all his hosts. 
Praise ye him, sun and moon, and praise him, all ye stars of light. Praise him, ye heavens of heavens, and ye waters that be above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded, and they were created. He hath also established them forever and ever. He hath made a decree which shall not pass. Praise the Lord for, from the earth, ye dragons and all deeps, fire and hail, snow and vapor, stormy wind, fulfilling his word. Here, a gigantic hailstorm in Italy, uh, fist-sized hail destroyed the city and villages. July 20th, 2023. Floodwaters cover a car, okay, in uh, the yards of houses. Emilinia Village, again, it's a village, central Greece, Tuesday, September 5th, 2023. Here again, we have Italy. The 22nd, 2023, it is 1024 a.m. here. I just showed you a little bit of a cloud that's covering here. And this is where Daniel is, is now starting to leave Greece. This was September 7th, 2023. Now, I, I want to bring to your attention that something came to me um, and it was the picture of Jesus on my roof, and it was the boot, and I never understood the boot. I, I seen it very clear. To, it was very clear to me that there was a boot here, and I've always said that when Jesus came to me, there was always prophecy, but I didn't receive a prophecy. I was just showing you the picture, but I never really had the understanding of why, and now I do, and now the, the prophecy is now being is, is put in front of me and again it's the boot it was Greece so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with um, after I had put this out about Leviathan when I started to talk about Leviathan it was three months later where all of this started to kick off not to say that it hasn't happened before but in the multitude and the, the just the, the, the scope of everything here um, was within like I said, the three months after I started talking about Leviathan. Now, I've been working on this for the last six months, and I've been very nervous coming to you about this, but it's not about me. So, again, I really believe that the boot was pointing at Greece, and I'm about to tell you and show you a few things that I have seen along the, line, along the way here, okay? So, let's get started with... After all of this with finding out about the dogs and the, the, you know, going back into those ancient times, finding out about Nimrod and being Labrador connected with the people, 500 uh, BCE was a big connection for me to keep going, okay? So again, let's get started. Okay, so here, this is really important because what happened was, um, as I'm going through all of this and, and learning and getting information and, and receiving, I was laying down one day and I'm trying to put it all together. I'm trying to pull all of this together for understanding. And I, I remembered um, a boot that was in the picture of Jesus where he's on my roof and it, it brought me back to this, this gentleman here, this brother here. He had did a lot of homework on Italy, and I remembered the boot. He had the, the shape of the boot. It was a long-legged boot, and I'm thinking, that, that's it. So I came back here, and this is the first thing that I see, and I was just in awe when I was reading it because I made the connection right away, again, with the star that I just explained to you about the curved light, okay? Well, listen to this. All right, so I find this. This is the next thing I, I run into, okay? And believe me, I highly recommend that you go to this channel and read what you can and what he's been able to give you. It's I do believe in this man. So here, okay, so I, on September 12th, 2022, I heard in the spirit word, this the spirit words, Lambda will light up. I also saw a key that turns and moves the gear of the of the eaten tops, eaten tops which performs the ignition. 
I saw the truck with pitcher slides on its backside. Also that morning, I dreamed that I was driving the car into the church through the door. I looked up at the roof from inside the church and the roof was on fire. Then I left the church and told someone I dreamed that this would happen. There was a comment left to him for, in here. It's, he, this person says, On the back of the human skull is the lambda su, uh, suture, behind which is the visual cortex images in the brain. It is the shape as a Greek letter lambda. Lambda is also a symbol for wavelength of light and it brought me right back to what I just read about the star. Lambda suture itself resembles the eaten teeth of gears and keys. Okay, so he's got it all here in the diagram. So what really surprised me also was to see the rising phoenix because again this would be Maui, right? And I'm putting the rising phoenix and I'm putting um, the, you know, rebuild and, you know, build back better as the, as the same thing being said here, you know? So, and then I remember the, the do you remember when he mentioned, um, about his car, his truck being broken into and that there, everything was moved in the truck, but nothing was taken. And then there was another truck that was in front of him, that it was facing him. It was odd. It was awkward. Right. Do you remember that? Well, that's, this is what he's saying right here. You know, he's saying that everything I saw the truck with the picture slides on its side. But yet again, he says that his truck was broken into and nothing was taken. And this is truly Maui that set that that was lit up. OK, so we're back here at uh, Maui. All right. And I'm going to read this out. And again, it's for cause for discernment. And uh, I'm just going to keep going here. And to the kings that were on the north of the mountains and of the plains south of Chinroth and in the valley and in the borders of Dor on the west. And to the Canaanite and on the east and on the, on, and on the west. And to the Amorite and to the Haiti and to the Perezit and the Jeb Jebusite in the mountains. And to the Hevite under Hermon in the land of Mishpha. And they went out, they and all their host with them, much people, even as the sand that is upon the sea shore in multitude, with horses and chariots very many. And when all these kings were met together, they came and pitched together at the waters of Moron to fight against Israel. And to the kings that were on the north of the mountains and of the plains south of Chinneroth and in the valley and in the borders of Dora on the west. And their storm was called Dora and it was on the south, 700 miles away from Maui. Again, I, I really believe that uh, this is connected uh, with Leviathan. When I started to read about and, and talk about Leviathan, which is about now about six months, three months that I put up the video. And then if you look at the dates and see what was going on and what was happening within the seas and the just the the whole the whole thing, it's just so here we have behold, God is great and we know him not. Neither can the number of his years be searched out. For he maketh small the drops of water. They that pour down in the rain according to the vapor thereof, which the clouds do drop and distill upon man ab 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 abundantly. And here we are being warned about the weather and what is happening. And God needs to, to tell us that there's something going on here in through Job. Job 36, because even the cattle also are concerned of the vapor. So he's telling you there, there's something that is just, there's a difference. Okay, and that we need to discern. This is cause for discernment. In Job 30, uh, 36, 32, with clouds he covereth the 